that picture. In front of you, you have the latest Family of the BBC book. So the goodies. The goodies. So if you'd like to. Uh, right. Scarpel, please. <laughs> Thank you. Right, here we go. And I hope I'm not going to cut right in the middle of something again. Is that right? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I don't know about opening that in. Can I open that? Yes, I can. Here we go. Blimey. Should you wish to buy this, they'll be well packaged when you arrive. There'll be no breakages. Oh, there you go. Cool, blimey. There's not going to be another layer inside this, is it? I'm not going to find a Russian doll, am I? <laughs> oh, look out. There he is, the man. Look at that. Right, here we go. You move that out of the way. And there it is. That looks very nice. There's Chapel in full flight. Oh, on both sides. Yes, there we go. Right, now it's all to do again. I know it was a Russian doll. The picture on the front yeah. is a Michael Putman photograph, which was actually taken at the BBC. Oh, right. Yes, he, makes, he does a good photo, does Chapel, doesn't he? Did you see that thing that, where we, we played in Germany a little while back? Uh, the uh, uh, Hamburg, it's just outside Hamburg we play this show. I missed it. It's, um, I'll send you the link actually because it's really well, it's really well um, uh, uh, videoed. It's like five camera job, you know, with, uh, you know, sort of everywhere. But um, uh, it's, um, Chapo, we did, I don't know, we, we played it 30, I played it 30 years ago with him and he went, wow. and at the end of it he goes, see you in the next 30 years then. <laughs> right then, okay, we've got that bit out. Here we go then. Oh, this is all very posh, this is, look at this. Wow, well, top gear, a few top gears there. Saturday Club, I was, yeah. Was that a live? That was a live gig, wasn't it? I think it was, there was a couple of live gigs. Yeah. I always liked the ones with Peel, wasn't it? Was it with Peel or what? It varied, but generally it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was nice because it was one of the little theatres. I can't remember now, but one of the BBC theatres. And it was really nice atmosphere, maybe 150 people, 200 people, something like that. Really nice, sort of, you know, all fans, you know, of course. So you can't go wrong, can you, really, you know, when you... Well, look at that. Well, there's a so few. The first, it's the first four CDs and there's four at the back. Four at the back, right, okay. So this lists the earliest family recording uh, they did for the BBC, which was in si November 67. Okay. And it was thought to have disappeared, but you managed to track three out of the five tracks, which includes Seen Through the Other Lens, which is a real rarity and obviously a, a real gem. Yes, I can't. Well, so th those are what? Uh, that's what uh, from. Oh, I see. Sixty-seven to sixty-eight, the first one, and then CD two, sixty-eight to sixty-nine. So that was probably before my time, wasn't it? That was uh, those first two ones, yeah. and then uh, sixty-nine. That might have been. I'm not sure whether I was. Oh well, it was definitely John Peel's Sunday Show. We've left all of John Peel's and the broadcaster's narration in and interviews because it just adds the authenticity and yeah. clearance from uh, Sheila Ray. What a laconic old sod he was, isn't he? Absolutely. You know? But Family were one of his favourite bands. Yeah, I know. Yes, I mean, he wouldn't sort of, he would never tell us that, of course. <laughs> but I uh, know, I mean, it wasn't until later that you actually realised that you seemed to be on these shows more than other people, you know. And it, you know what I mean? It's like, and you think, well, we're on there an awful lot of time, you know. Yeah, good, round and wine. Wheels, yes, yeah, score. Some of these tunes, I can't do <laughs> blow by blow. That was an ad hoc thing. Which yes, well, the thing was, is, is uh, 
I can remember, actually, now here's an anecdote that you might have to edit out, but I can remember doing this show, that, that particular show, and uh, he says, what are you going to do for Encore? John Peel said. And we said, well, we, we always do this jam at the end. He said, what's it called? He said, well, we usually call it the blowjob. <laughs> and <laughs> and he, so he went, oh, well, I can't really announce it as that. So, uh, so uh, anyway, that was what we found out. He called it, you know, on the, for the thing, blow by blow, yes. But, uh, yes, Bob Harris show, yes, a few there as well. Well, the thing is, it's nice because it bookended with the last ever show from 73 as well. I oh, right. discovered a diversion or Sweet Beverly, uh, and uh, whether it's Brian Matthews saying that could be the last ever track from The Family because of Lever, they're splitting up. So oh, yeah, it's, yes. It's all in the notes. Yes, doing their thing, yes. I, think I remember that, doing that show that for some reason. Right, let's have a look in the book then. Oh, a poster as well. Missed the poster, haven't I? This is a poster. This is a very uh, rare poster. My family entertainment album. Very on PC. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> a classic of its time. Yeah, here we go. Anything of family entertainment. Well, I'll drop it out there, Josh, because I can't quite. Yeah, you can't see it. It's a little bit lower. Uh, there you go. That's it. That's, that's a bit un-PC, isn't it? Now, do you know the story of that? I don't. Because this was before my time. Mm -hmm. But what oh, actually yeah. what actually happened was that uh, they decided at that concert that they, they had jugglers and what now, or whatever, you know, because of the album and all that sort of thing. And they decided they would all do different uh, individual solo slots. So I don't know what Rog did, but and Charlie did something on their own, you see. And it comes to Rob and Rob went, what am I going to do? I'm a drummer, you know, what can I do? And so uh, uh, Jim King, who used to, I used to live just around the corner from them, and Jim King used to come round, I used to, I was in a band called the Blossom Toes at that time, and he used to walk round from Lots Road into just by where the uh, Chelsea football ground is. He walked round and we'd sit in the back garden and I'd play flute and he'd play soprano and, you know, away with the fairies, really, you know, so on a Sunday afternoon, as, as one did in those days, you know. So we, we'd do that quite regularly, he'd come round. Anyway, Rob's panicking, what shall I do for the gig? And Jim King said, why don't you get my mate, I, he plays vibes, and why don't you, I'm sure he'll knock up a bit of a tune and you can, like, play a bit of a solo in it. So that's it. They got me in to do this show, just just to play with uh, with Rob, and we played it. And you know, I played a little thing. We did little fours, you know, where I play a little solo, and Rob would go. So was that your first connection with Fallon? That was it. Yeah. Wow. So that was I did that gig and went away, and and I was still with the Blosses at the time. Then I left Blosses, and I joined a band called Eclection, mm -hmm. and then. Jim was, you know, losing, you know, he was losing the plot a bit, unfortunately, Jim King was, you know, oh, so a it was a trouble, he was a talented man, you know, but anyway, he lost the plot, so they decided they had to, you know, lose him, you know, unfortunately, and so I think it was Rod said, what about that guy that plays the bottles, <laughs> you know, because, you know, the tubes on the vibes, you know, <laughs> and he said, what about him? You know, so they went, yeah, let's go. So they rang me up and said, you fancy joining the family? So I went, oh, that'd be lovely. Thank you very much. So unbeknown to us, we've included this poster. And yeah. It's very apt. Yes, it is. That was, that was how I got the gig. That, Fantastic. That particular gig was how I actually got the family gig. You know? And I, and I, to be honest with you, I was I knew Jim, you know, but, uh, and I knew Roger's singing. And I, I joined because of Roger's singing, to be honest with you. And I, it wasn't until you join a band and you realise all the little talent that, that lies within, if you know what I mean, and, uh, and the writing, you know, I was, uh, that's what came secondary in a way. But, uh, but you know, the first thing you is, is Roger's voice, power of voice, you know. So that is it. That's my, that was my first, that was my CV, that was, in fact, you know. Fantastic. So there we go, that's it, yeah. Well, I think a lot, having spoken to a couple of Band. They're very excited about some of the photographs because there's a lot of rare photographs we've managed to track down from 
and the likes of Michael Putland and Gilles Bermanowski. Um, and it's, it's, it's added to the, the interest, really. We've tried to include as many BBC shots as we can. Yes, a, I always love it. That, uh, that doesn't look like a yellow kit, but um, Rob's kit. He, he, he actually bought, I don't know if the, he bought sort of yellow toms the kit and but the bass drum was was not yellow so he what's that stuff you put on shelves you know in the kitchen what's it called well, Paul, not, um, you know that thing you peel it off and you put it on a shelf yeah. oh you know what that, I, do, I know what you mean I well anyway that's that was his, that was his bass drum was covered with that Good thing. Had, well, yeah, the two toms were yellow, but and, and but he, you know the the bass drum wasn't. So he, they, he, what's he called? I forget now. Anyway, but you know what I mean. But yeah, this is a good old picture of uh, top of the pops there. Eh? Nice, and that looks like the Isle of uh, the not the um, the. Uh, 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 Which one? Show it round for the, the, the yes, the, this one. That's, that's Hyde Park. That's Hyde Park. That's yes, 68, that's sixty-eight, though, not yeah. sixty-nine. Now, I think I was on there with a collection. Not, I think it was either that gig or the, was that, that wasn't with the... Um, no, the Stones were 69. Yeah, it, it was the Blind Faith one. I don't, I don't know, actually. Yeah, I can't remember. But I know I did that. Um, I, I did that with, uh, with a collection. And of course, uh, what's his Jeff Dexter? You know Jeff Dexter. Yes, don't you? Yeah. Jeff Dexter rang me up and he said, "I've got some photographs of Hyde Park. You playing I'm with family?" And I went, "No, no, no, you haven't. No, no, no." And he said, "Well, he said if it wasn't family, it was somebody else." And uh, I said, "No, I've never played Hyde Park at all. You know, usual, you know, usual thing, uh, '60s memory, you know." And uh, and he he said, "Oh, well, hold on a minute," and he sent me a picture of me playing in Hyde Park. <laughs> <laughs> you know, playing keyboards in that park, you know. Oh, well, maybe I did. <laughs> oh, that's a good. There's some good photos, isn't there? You know, look at that one. That's a that's a nice one with Willie with John Wheeler. That was been seen before. That was included in the book, but again, it was related. I think it was at the BBC session. Yes, it is. It looks it looks actually like a mime to me. Well, it is a mime because there's not a mic in sight or an amp in sight, is there? Managed to train us all to do that at once. That's that's something else. That is. I think that was also from the BBC. I was think. it? Yeah. Because normally, for as you noticed, most of the pictures, especially on albums and stuff like that, we always went for the outtake. You know, when somebody goes ah, yeah. like this, yeah. we go, "Well, that's the one." I mean, I let somebody put it up on Facebook a while back, and I love it actually. Is the the strange band? EP with, with, with and it was just like Willie was pulling this really weird face and somebody said let's paint his face green <laughs> <laughs> you know a strange band and it just sort of worked didn't it you know but we always like that we really always like the outtakes you know because you can't take otherwise you can't take yourself very seriously no, you know? no I agree god that my old rig there blimey this here, I don't know if you can see that, but the keys, and on, on top of the keys, oh. there's a, a Wem copycat echo, uh -huh. which I used to run the flute through. But also that thing there is a, a maestro. It's a Gibson maestro. What the thing just the top on the top? It? It's it's one with uh, there in the middle. It's it's a bit indistinct. But can you see that in the middle there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a Gibson maestro, which is for was for saxes actually, but I used to run the vibes through that. So I could get them all dirty, you know, the dirty you got sax. That quite unique sound, didn't you? Yeah, well, you know, it was just like, uh, I mean, vibes were great, you know, I mean, Roger always liked them, but it's nice to have sort of some unusual things. And this is pre synths of course, isn't it? It you is, know? and also complements Roger's voice. I think there was only six sessions we couldn't get that one's from one of your last, that's the last tour. Oh, that's... Uh, that's the rainbow. That's a Jill Fermanovsky shot. That's from, um, that's uh, Linda Lewis, isn't it? It is. Yeah, that, yeah. that one there. Yeah. Linda's still going. She, uh, I noticed actually there was a bit of a, a, a Pete Feenstra 
put a thing up for um, Cregan and Co. Of course, they were playing all over the place, and she got up and sang with them. So uh, that was a sort of turnaround from uh, yesteryear, because the, they were an item yeah, right. during this time, of that's course. Right. They, were, they were an item. What, when was that from? That's Top of the Pops again. And I can tell by that. You know, it's weird how you... See that picture here? That's I can, in my own time. Exactly, I was just about to say that. I can tell by the actual mallets, the chord I make playing there. It's that weird chords at the front. And I know that that is, that is the front of, of in my own and time. And we have a then and now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. What a handsome brute I was in those days, eh? There's some even better ones coming up. Oh, is there? Oh, bloody hell. Now, that's a particularly amusing one. Have you seen the names? The the oh, on this on these um, yeah. this one here. If yeah. You look at the names. Yeah. Look what they've written. They've got the wrong people. Oh right, yeah, it's got Rick Gretsch there. Yes. It's not a bump into uh, his missus. Uh, well, his widow. Uh, um, occasionally, actually, she lives not far from Wor uh, from um, oh, right. She uh, yeah, she's still about. Jim King, yes, Rick Gretsch. <laughs> Definitely got it all totally wrong now. Uh, <laughs> typical Rodge that one is, isn't it? It's like, uh, you, know, you know, obviously the photographer has gone like, no lads, can we have one that's absolutely sensible, please? You know, like, uh, you know, like, it's not messing about. And of course, we've all put the serious expression on our face, except for Rodge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we used to have a few good old suits in those days. That one, that suit I'm wearing there, which you can't see, is pink. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I think... Uh, it was of the time, wasn't it? Seven yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Woven Festival uh, where Hendrix headlined. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's course that was, yeah. Rush. Now that one there, I think, was uh, yeah, and it was um, uh, Spanish Tide. Yeah, right? That's right. Spanish Tide, I think. There's a couple of the that well, the two tracks are on the DVD. It's included in the package. Yeah. Yes. Cool, blimey! I'm looking at Tony Ashton there. That picture of Tony Ashton. He looks like John Wetton there. He does a bit. He does, doesn't he? he doesn't, he does. I wouldn't have recognised him. I thought that was, because Wetton played a bit of keys, so, you know, I thought that was him. Yeah. No, that's, that was definitely Tony Ashton. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. He does look like, I don't yeah. know what you mean about the similarity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the old uh, balloons for days. That was taken at Bristol. University, I uh, oh, right. Yes, I can see, yeah, yeah. There we go. Charlie's fought his famous double neck. Yeah. He actually got, uh, he actually one time, uh, uh, he would sort of get, you know, if he didn't feel that he was, uh, you know, it was on top of the game, he was, uh, he would, um, you know, get really rappy with himself, sort of thing. And he, he actually put his lap down on it against the amp one day and, and just jumped on it, broke it. <laughs> <laughs> so it had to get fixed again. Yeah, it was fixed, yeah. I mean, I think it was, luckily, it was broke into two separate guitars, if you follow what I mean, but even so. so it easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, actually, uh, rumour has it that uh, Clapton offered him 1,500 quid Back in the day, in the early seventies, you know, during the cream time, you know. Wow. Now, how much that would be in uh, in today's money? You've got to add a naught to it, haven't you? Really? I would say. Yes, I've always felt sorry for. <laughs> I always felt sorry for uh, for Charlie and. Um, and Jim, you know, using those double neck guitars. Because you ever put one round your neck, they're like, oh God, they're really heavy. I mean, they are, they're sort of really heavy. So 
So we've listed also the sessions that there's only six sessions we missed, we couldn't get hold of, which we've listed, which they are within the book. Well, this is this is obviously. Uh, I'm looking now at this picture of a. I've seen some, a black and white of these pictures, um, but I've no idea what's going on here. Uh, let me just see if I can recognise anybody before I turn it round. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this. This is obviously from from. Uh, it was an actual do for a, for one of the albums, I think, and I think it was at the back of a club. Which club it was, I don't know. This one, this one here, I've seen a colour version of that. Oh. This one, no, the one oh. on the right, yeah. yeah. That one there, I've seen a colour version of that, slightly different. But this one here, I've never seen before. That's fantastic, isn't it? Have you get uh, that one there? It is. It's... Uh, I don't know what the album, was it Hanya movie or was it... No, 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 it was, I wasn't in Hanya movie. So well, it, it, is it going to be Jim Fearless Cregan's or... Jim Cregan's in there, actually. Yes, Jim Cregan. So it'd be... Bandstand? Yeah, no, actually, it must have been, it actually, it can't have been for an album, could it? Because Jim well, wasn't on any of those, and he was on only a movie, which I wasn't on. Yeah, so, so it must have been something. In between albums, maybe. Uh, the only, I'm trying to see the, the people here. Um, I should, I bet there are people who would recognise some of these women. They're so great, the girls look great, don't they? But the amazing thing is, is on the outside... Uh, is that's Tony Gorbish who handled the band in those days, dressed as a as kind of a, and this is um, uh, Brian Coles who was our sort of Percy. Well, he was the road manager. Wasn't he? Well, he was a sort of tour manager, really. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. a tour manager with the with the false booms. Well, Brian was involved in the, re the first reunion. That's right, he was. Yes, right. And it's funny because that was the thing is uh, he was called uh, what we call him not was it Stan. Stan it was. There was a thing, because when I joined the band, there was like, my real name's John, but I've always been called Polly, but my real name was John. The, it was John Whitney. Charlie Whitney. John right, Whitney. and it was John Weeder. And we went, there's too many Johns, see? So I was already, I was being called Polly anyway, but that was why Charlie became Charlie, you know, because they, a few people called him Charlie, but that, that, was, that was it. And then Willie Weeder sort of thing. Now, the thing was, is we also had several Bryans in, in the crew. We had at least two or three Bryans. So the, um, and, <laughs> and so when, when Brian Coles joined us, you know, in the crew, we went, I'm oh, sorry, you know, you can't be Brian, you know, you've got to be something else. So he, he'd be called Stanley. And he, <laughs> I had an email. I had an email from him, like, and we're talking fifty years later. I had an email. He was sat with Roger in the in the Sun Inn, and he went, "Hello there, Stanley here." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and even um, even John Wetton, when John Wetton joined, we went, "Sorry, can't." Too many Johns. John, no, too many Johns. So, and we said, uh, "What's so what's your middle name?" Yeah, I'm not telling you. And it was uh, I forget now, but it was quite a it was a name that he hated. Uh, I think it was Ken, Kenneth, and so he was Ken all the way through. You know, and somebody grabbed his passport. You know, as we're going through customs, and they grabbed Ken, Ken. <laughs> so there we go. So uh, it's it's funny. I, I mean, stupid things like that just do. They they get a life of their own, they don't do. they? Really, you know. We're intrigued to know what that was launched for because I haven't been able to find. No, it. you're right because I thought it was an album launch, but it can't have been because me and Jim both been oh, in there. So it must have been, but it must have been something. I don't know whether it was. It might have been like a Christmas. I mean, it's all fancy dress sort of thing, isn't it? You know. Jim looks great in there, doesn't he? Like that. He looks like Freddie Frinton. You know that that thing that the Germans the Germans have every Christmas. They have a thing called a, a, a solo feast or something like that. It's it's it, and it's a it's a, a a thing that the Germans in Austria they have it every Christmas. They put it on uh, just like the Queen's speech over here, and it's Freddie Frinton and a woman, and the woman's like a very rich old. Um, you know, aristocrat, and he's the butler who's slowly getting pissed, 
and he's sort of going around and he's slopping the soup all over. And the Germans, I mean, Freddie Frinton is great. Have you ever sort of... I've never seen it, I know all of it. Yes, I mean, he's an old musical performer. And this was done in the 60s, and they've been showing it on German and Austrian television ever since for all that, all that time sort of thing, you know. And Jim looks just like him. And Jim looks just like him, you know. He's, well, evidently, that was his dad's, his dad's uh, morning suit, that was. Great winner, Charlie, there, isn't it? Fabulous. That's a great winner, Charlie, there. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what a Keegan under. Yeah, That's yeah. Right yeah. The nice thing about uh, the Beeb, you know, is that the actual, uh, you know, the shows, they, they were really good in terms of you know, you record it, you either went in and record almost like a, a regular session, so you could actually try your new t material out, you know, without well, actually it charge, you know, no new freebie, one, really, freebie recording time, you know. One of the reviewers said that if they're from reviewing this, it's going to be reviewed yet. He listened to the performances and he thought some of them were better than the album version. Yeah. Yet you really came to life live. Well, that's it. But you did have to do them sort of live. There was no, I think, a couple of times we overdone. There's a few tracks on there which have been played, and our, we've said and stated are just records being played. But yeah. the majority are live sessions. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. But I, as I say, they were a great way of trying stuff out. You know, you go into a, the Beeb and sort of they, they've got a sort of a, a preview of what's going to be on your next album, and you've really honed it up a bit, you know. Definitely. And it's, we describe at the beginning how the BBC operate with transcription discs and for the world services, where we thought something was the Saturday Club. It comes out as this, Brian Matthews are saying, this is top of the pops. And there's a reason for that, which is explained in the notes at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually, the, the only thing I think nobody, it was a shame nobody picked up was, was Rock Palace, you know, over here. They just grabbed little bits. They, they showed snippets of the Beeb and, the, and ITB. They never actually showed the show, and it was a huge show. I mean, it was so well done, and it went out to 25, 30 uh, live on a Saturday night from something like 11 o'clock to 4 in the morning, live shows with all the top, you know, we did it with ZZ Top and Zappa. Well, we did it a few times, you know, but uh, uh, it, I mean, it's amazing, you know, like, and, it, and they, had, uh, uh, they had a 24 track, they had another mobile that was just broadcasting for FM radio, and then they had the mobile that was doing all the the uh, all the video, and they'd already come to rehearsals to watch who to shoot at certain places. You wow! Know? I mean, they really did it well, and and the uh, I forget now who, who the, the there's a couple of guys produced it, and it went on for years and years and years, and it was a great show, and it was live. I mean, it was. Uh, uh, the I can remember uh, the manager. It was so frenetic because they start they they follow you out the dressing room with the cameras straight onto stage, and there's no like if the string breaks, sorry, you know, the show's got to go on, you know. If, warts and all. If warts and all, you know. And the thing is, is things do get break down, but it you can't sort of stop. That's what the fans realize. I think you see at the end there we put um, a family tree. We've got the family tree. Yes, I'm just looking at that now. Yes, yes. That, but that's what the fans like, I think, Paul. Yeah. The, it is a lot of the live sets we've done, they want the, the bum notes and, and that because it makes it more real. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it's, uh, as Roger sort of says, you know, we sort of just threw it at the wall to see if it sticks and there was nothing more cleverer than that, you know. It's just you, you like it and, oh, that sounds good, we'll do that, you know. So there was like vibes and banjos and really weird sort of, instruments playing together you know sort of uh that's unusual yeah well it wasn't unusual it was just that sounds good let's mm. use that you know it wasn't like you can't do that there the was... fact that you were using vibes and as you say um harp things like flutes yeah yeah well very nice i'm impressed lads well done thank you very much well, yes. thank you for coming in Paul. yeah no it's good to see good to see you too here's the next one yeah, to the next 30 years. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Cheers. <laughs>